Okay. Hopefully I'm going to make a very simple analogy here of why prime lenses are superior and why multi-element uh, um, uh, zoom lenses uh, are inferior so far as it uh, pertains um, to renditional distortion. And I can assure you that even though you will not read about, it doesn't matter what term I give it, I've referred to it specifically, and it's accurate, as renditional distortion, but no matter what term you find that you will try to look for it under, it doesn't exist in any description, in any photography book, in any photography class, in any mention by Nikon, in any mention by Canon, in any mention by Leica, Zeiss, or anybody. But it is real and it exists. Um, I'm using diffraction grading over the front of this element, and now I'm using RGB LEDs. Now they are on a homogeneous flat plane that are being emitted by the RGB LED. Now, as is the case, obviously, the higher the frequency, the shorter the wavelength, the greater the power. Towards the blue end of the spectrum, we have, of course, more power. Towards the red end of the spectrum, we have less power potency. As is the case, the greater spatial transverse nature of the light i.e. the greater the electrical and magnetic transverse spatial reciprocation in the light, i.e. towards the red end of the spectrum, the further away from the source it gets. We have, um, as is the case by ED doped glass and multi-element uh, uh, zoom lenses, but some prime lenses that have too many uh, achromatic doublets and some lenses that have, uh, some even prime lenses that have uh, ED glass, is that we have uh, Doppler disparity, we have binocular disparity, but specifically we have phase disparity. Now we're looking at a single point of light here. Let me position my secondary grading. Here we go. And then we're going to look at red. Now let me adjust the red correctly here. We're looking at uh, red fit. Now this, now obviously every photograph is composed of endless billions points of light. Now this is a single point of bright light, but now we're looking at a photograph. We're taking one point of a photograph analogously here, and we're applying it to multiple phases. Okay, so every point in your photograph as it pertains to the foreground and the background of the reflected light or the filth flash that you add, as it passes through your lens, the reason why the uh, low element prime lenses are superior is that you uh, just imagine a billion trillion points of these light comprising an evenly illuminated photograph outdoors. You got a dog in the foreground and, I don't know, the hydrant in the background and the house behind the dog, and people will look at the prime lenses and they'll go, well, I like the prime lens better for some reason. I, I see better color saturation, which is the case because actually, uh, as is the case with uh, lenses with uh, too many uh, lens elements in them. Now, of course, the, 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 uh, the thickness varies. So you could have one element that is as thick as three other elements. So it's not specifically element count, but also what the element is doped with, what it's made out of. It could be a fluoride element. It could be a glass element. ED glass isn't glass. Well, yes, it's glass, but what do you mean it's not glass? Well, it's doped with one of four compounds that actually changes the magnetic uh, permeability and the dielectric permittivity of the light. Now, if I were to turn on the white light here, and remember, just imagine this as a singular point of light that is passing from your reflected sub subject that you're capturing. You'll notice that the blue light is always pointing towards the center. Now, when we talk about blue shift and red shift in uh, uh, astrophotography or you know how people determine whether galaxies or stars are moving towards us or away from it. Obviously, they're moving towards us. They're blue shifted. That's due to spatial, uh, due to acceleration causes a change in the wavelength. So we talk about blue shifted light versus something that's moving farther away, which is uh, implying force and in motion, increasing spatial. Uh, spatial void, which means lack of inertia between, say, the moving away star and uh, the observer's eyes. Now, that is, has to do with induction, but that's not directly pertinent to photography. I mean, nobody wants to know about that specifically. But as you can actually see here, let me, if I bring 
If I were able to zoom in wider, zoom out wider on this, you would actually see a spherical bowl shape on this uh, single point of light. You'll actually notice that the white light in the center will be the apex of a sphere or a bowl where the you know the bowl end is pointing towards you like an upside down bowl. You're looking at an upside down bowl. You can see the blue light pointing towards the center. That The blue light is more potent. It has a shorter wavelength. It has a higher capacitance and of course the blue end of the spectrum has greater power. You go past the blue end of the spectrum that's where it's, you start getting skin cancer and you know, you, you go further than that, and then you're getting into x-rays and stuff that will actually kill you within a short period of time. But the, the reason why the blue light is shifted that way, we have uh, a phase disparity between the RGB uh, LEDs, which are exactly, they're less than a millimeter apart from each other, but they're completely flat. So one is not closer to this recording device than the other. They're all equal distance, but the reason that the blue light seemingly is pointing towards the light is that it has the higher proximal uh, location towards the original source. Now obviously neither my camera that I'm recording with nor the light is moving, but what we have here is the phase disparity that makes up a normal point of light of which there are billions that comprise the photography that you're shooting. You create one image of Spot the Dog and the hydrant behind them and you whip out, you know, the 28 to 300, and you go, you yeah, know, this image looks kind of flat. You know, the blues seem kind of washed out, and it's like, spot is like iron flat against the house that's 100 yards in the background. Most people don't know, you can really see it on 70 to 200 lenses, so like the Tamron 7200 VC, while well, it's extremely fast autofocus, and a very sharp lens. This is all people think about. You go over on diaper and pee review and people, how sharp's the lens? How sharp's the lens? How sharp's the lens? Well, how fast is it autofocus? How fast is it auto... Okay, you know, how bad is the vignetting? How bad... Sharpness, vignetting. And sharpness, vignetting. It just, it's a non-stop. It's like, well, how sharp is the lens? How fast is the autofocus? How bad is the... You know, this, this exists and it's as serious as a heart attack. And what I'm referring to, let me get the... Let me uh, use my secondary diffraction here. And uh, I'll, I'll show it to you. I said this is representational of a single point of light of which you would have billions in a photograph. Okay, now let me shift between the red, the green, and the blue. So we have the mid-spectrum of greens, which are close to the yellows. We have uh, the, uh, the, uh, the far-end spectrum, uh, the red, excuse me, the near-end spectrum red, and we have uh, the far-end spectrum of blue. And as you see here, as I shift, I'm not moving anything. I'm showing you the phase disparity. This is what creates holographic depth. Now, the holograms are not using RGB light. They're using a single beam of one singular frequency of light. But what they're doing is they're using a splitter, which is a partially uh, coded mirror where it has a reference beam and an object beam, okay? And it is bouncing off that, say this is a, a red laser, it is bouncing off that object that has depth, but it has a reference beam that's transmitted to the film, and then you get your actual depth due to the coherent, the phase coherency that exists in the laser beam vis-a-vis -vis the, the binocular disparity of the coherent singular frequency of light. But when we're taking a photograph, we're not dealing with a singular frequency of light, and we're not dealing with coherent light, we're dealing with incoherent light most of which is reflected. You know, the sun reflected off Spot's face. The sun reflected off the landscape. Okay? And what happens is when uh, Nikon and Canon and everybody else introduces ED-doped... Let me get the... Uh let me get the phase just right here. When Nikon and Canon and everybody introduces these achromatic doublets and they introduce ED doped glass which are doped with uh, dielectric uh, compounds which changes the, uh, uh, the, the, the phase disparity as it passes through the ED glass and causes convergence at the same focal plane between the red and the blue Okay, if you can focus red and blue, everything else in between is also focused. You don't have to worry about the red end of the spectrum and the blue end of the spectrum. Okay? What happens is, is this causes... <coughs> excuse me. I've called it jokingly iron phase, but what it does is it causes like monocular phase... It is the inverse of disparity. It is homogenization of the light that is passed through the lens because it is either A, passing through too much glass, 
which is a dielectric capacitor. If you want to go look at MED's exper uh, the MIT experiment on the Leyden jar, you know you, you can gladly go do that. But what it does is it takes all these points of light, each of which, you know, whether it's red light, green light, blue light, whatever color it is, and there's just billions of them in every photograph. It homogenizes them, just like taking a person and poking their eyeball out and turning them into a cyclops, so they lose depth of field. That uh, that phase, the erasure of the phase disparity of every singular point of light of which there are billions entering the lens and hitting the back of your sensor is the reason why these low element prime lenses are superior. Even though they may be 40 year old glass that don't have extremely good uh, AR coating, I mean you don't need that great of an AR coating honestly. If you got a lens hood, you don't even need AR coating at all. Now it does cut down a little bit on the light, but you know you you definitely don't need nanoparticle coated glass. Now nano nanoparticle coated glass is necessary, and uh, ED elements are because back you know in the 70s there's no such thing as a 28 to 300 or an 18 to 200 because the actual optical necessity of constructing such a device was impossible due to lack of ED doped glass due to lack of nanoparticle coating due to lack of superior anti-reflective coatings which is by the way a crystalline deposit that is va crystalline deposit on the lens it's vacuum deposited on the lens it's put on filter high-end filters as well okay so as you see here as I shift let me get my filter in the right place here yeah. there we go I have my hand in the way It's hard getting it just perfect. There we go. Sorry, it took a second. As you see, as I switch between each one of these, this is a singular point of light. Okay, while well, well, it is a large point of light, obviously. But uh, I hope you get the, the point. I mean, this is kind of the simplest way I could think of explaining the homogenization and. Uh, of uh, use of uh, achromatic, numerous achromatic doublets and uh, the ED doped glass as causing a uh, lack, uh, lack of a true uh, renditional, uh, uh, true rendition of the photograph that you're trying to make. And this is what happens with lenses with too much glass or uh, especially zooms. Now, I'm not anti-zoom, about almost half of my lenses are zoom, so I don't want you to think I'm anti-zoom, but renditional distortion and no matter what name you call it, however, that is accurate. And you know, I thought long and hard about what to call it. And you know, renditional distortion is about the most accurate way to refer to it. it is real. It is palpable. It's seemingly ineffable. But you show people, show people photographing. Ask a thousand of the best photographers on earth, the top thousand. It's like, what do you like about your prime lens? I don't know. It just makes a better picture. Well, why does it make a better? I don't know. Well, why does it make a better picture? You've been shooting for fifty years. I don't know. They don't have any, I just know the, the color saturation is a little better. It's like, yeah, okay, 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 okay. So what else actually makes them? Well, I don't know, it's got less glass in it, so that's probably why. Well, what does that mean? That's a description. I know it's got less glass in it, but why does it make it better? I don't know, it's just got less glass in it, and that's why I prime. That's all you'll find on the internet. Nobody knows. Okay, we're talking about Doppler disparity. We're talking about binocular disparity. We're talking about phase the uh, light phase disparity of which you have every color of the rainbow reflecting you know going from the sun off of spots face off uh, you know the fire hydrant the sidewalk whatever the hell it is you're shooting and uh, the ED doped glass and the achromatic elements are butchering the light and this is renditional distortion this is why low element primes are better you can see it here I'm representing merely one single spot of light okay have I repeated myself a bit yeah, I sure have, but I think I've come up with a pretty good analogy. I was trying to think, well, how can I relate this to people in a decent analogy they'll get? And this is what I came up with. And if it isn't clear by now, then it's never going to be clear. Let's go back to our white light. So, there we go, folks. And if you're tripping out while watching this, then all the better for you. 